First off, thanks to the AIA Building Connections Congress for hosting this event. I feel privileged that this is my third time contributing to the dialogue at this venue over the last six years, even as current events have us participating a bit differently this time around. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy in your various parts of the world. I'd also like to thank members of my team at Proving Ground, both past and present, as supporters of this content. My former team member, Dr. David Stasek, was instrumental in co-authoring much of the content I'll be reviewing today, including writings and excerpts from our peer-reviewed research we conducted together in past years. Proving Ground team members Dr. Andrew Payne, Steve Sanda, Kristen Schulte, and Trigby Wasvet also made numerous contributions by way of software development and research into a variety of data-driven methods described here. Finally, I'd like to thank contributors to the digital design community, in particular those that author and contribute to open source projects. Much of the work I will be citing wouldn't be possible without the community efforts, and I hope our own contributions in these areas are helping others. As digital design consultants, Proving Ground has observed growing interest and excitement in adopting and applying emerging and sophisticated digital workflows and tools. It is surely a sign of progress that in an industry that is historically slow to change and highly risk adverse, that there is now a broad conversation happening among business decision makers in the role that data plays for driving performance in business decisions and in the quality of our products. But it is also important to gauge hype from reality. Much of the popular media on digital workflows illustrate exciting opportunities, data fueling decisions, AI that generates and predicts, and robots that build. These are exciting prospects. However, many of these capabilities and transformations, as William Gibson famously asserted, are not evenly distributed. In this talk, I'll be discussing two very interrelated topics through this lens, machine learning and the quality of our industry data. In our experience, we're seeing growing adoption of data-driven processes. That is, decision-making processes for design, construction, and operations that is informed or directed by available data. It is not a great leap of logic to conclude that with the majority of North American projects being delivered with building information modeling, that designers and builders would be well-positioned to utilize available data, including the application of predictive models and AI-supported automation. In recent years, applied machine learning techniques and advanced algorithms for data analysis have become increasingly ubiquitous within a wide array of professional and academic practices, ranging from the natural sciences to business and finance. The successful application of these algorithms hinges on their access to large volumes of data describing respective targets of inquiry. In machine learning, input data is organized into features, which may be produced through a variety of independent mechanisms. The heterogeneity of input data carries both potential and risk. While diverse input data may yield better results, it is generally a non-trivial effort to effectively capture, reconcile, and integrate multiple discrete data sources. So for example, decision support resulting from a sales analysis that relies on observation of business transactional data may be significantly enhanced or further informed by customer attitudinal data or scientific data describing natural phenomena collected through sensors or other observational techniques may be used in conjunction with data generated through the application of computational simulations. Yet the synthesis of distinct data sets into meaningful feature collections may require manual processing that relies not only on the ability and intuition of the user implementing the algorithm, but also on the quality and cleanliness of the data itself. Therefore, the value of these analytical techniques and decision support tools is almost invariably tied to the underlying data being correct, suitably voluminous, and well-structured. In other words, garbage in, garbage out. Architects and engineers have an established history of using machine learning algorithms to enhance manufacturing processes, search intractably large design spaces, or even generate building and floor plans. However, these techniques have been rarely applied as decision support tools with specified outcomes related to more subjective performance measures. The relative absence of predictive modeling for evaluating the impact of design decisions on architectural performance stems from multiple challenges. The first of these relates to problem definition. The difficulty in effectively articulating subjective design problems has been considered extensively because the introduction of a design solution may in fact introduce new unforeseen problems. Related to this is the difficulty in quantifying many performance outcomes relative to these stated problems, especially for those that appear outwardly subjective, such as the user's experience of the space. 
As a result, the most abundant examples of applied machine learning in the building sciences tend to focus on the physical characteristics of an assembly, such as its structural or thermal performance, or descriptions of its morphology. Additionally, there is a paucity of abundant, well-structured data that can supply the types of consistently applied labels for existing design conditions that are required for machine learning algorithms to become effective mechanisms for outcome prediction. The rare examples that engage in predictive modeling tend to highlight these conditions, such as efforts described by Dr. Daniel Davis for WeWork to leverage historical data to optimize its conference room design methodologies for end-user satisfaction. In this instance, the vertical structure of WeWork as a company that designs, owns, and operates its own buildings is able to also facilitate the acquisition, integration, and curation of disparate data sets created at different stages along the supply chain. Their research in this field serves to further underscore the challenges for realizing actual closed-loop predictive analysis in design practices that play a more limited role in the building lifecycle. As consultants, we're often approached by design practices to consult on initiatives surrounding data and uses of novel supporting technologies that can make use of that data. In particular, the interest in data contained within expansive portfolios of building information models has driven much of our recent work. It is a natural question then that given the abundance of data available, can we start to implement uses of AI and machine learning to improve our processes and our models? With respect to this opportunity, I'll pose a question to you that I sometimes ask of our clients. If you were to teach a new hire how to do their job using your digital data today, what kind of team member would they become? Contemporary architectural projects of even the most modest complexity are almost ubiquitously realized through the development and deployment of digital models for their production of pertinent representations such as 2D drawings and other documentation. It is still extremely rare to see models that possess rigorous attention to underlying data quality. Although the degree with which underlying data labels may be exposed to the designer varies, digital models are data-rich information structures. The procurement of these data for analytical purposes is all too often challenged by project complexity, fragmented processes, inconsistently applied modeling standards, and unsophisticated supply chains. We can observe these problems in a survey of the underlying model data contained within building information models. Model content often escapes quality control, property naming is at the service of the author's whims, and is all too commonplace to have even some of the most mature organizational standards go largely unfollowed or be outright ignored. If we return to our speculative new hire that is tasked with learning from some of this data, we can take some guesses at how well or poorly they will perform at their future job duties. Extending from this premise, we can also guess at the predictive effectiveness of a learning algorithm operating on repositories of well-structured but ultimately low-quality BIM data inputs. In our consultancy, we've been grappling with the problem of data quality for years. We do, in fact, believe there is unrealized potential in this kind of digital data, but simultaneously we understand that there are serious problems with the underlying data available in our industry based on the points I've already summarized. In effect, the challenges for firms to leverage their data, including BIM, enterprise planning, and project management data, is possible by investing in three key areas. Aggregating model data from often disparate sources, analyzing model data for baseline reliability of content and properties, and implementing processes for improving model data over time. Today, building information models largely exist as a collection of disaggregated files, often destined for archival after project production is completed. For the effective application of these BIM datasets within analytical workflows, we have developed a storage and access strategy that allows for data mining many models both within single and across multiple projects. Here we have created and implemented a relational database schema and system for automating its population with model data. The database is designed around the basic entity relationship hierarchy exhibited within BIM formats such as Revit and IFC, which here has been extended to accommodate the information transversal that scales from individual model element all the way up to the project levels. Using this pattern, we have created integrated applications to facilitate the migration of file-based data into the database. 
our data harvesting techniques have allowed us to effectively leverage BIM data by migrating the file-based data structure into a scalable, centralized database that can also be mined to produce training data sets for use in machine learning. However, even with a scalable data structure, producing a set of reliable data from Revit models is a problematic barrier and potentially represents a significant investment by a firm to clean and curate their past models. In this context, we had a hypothesis. If the underlying data in a collection of building information models traps us into an inevitable garbage in, garbage out scenario, and cleaning up models is far too costly for many practices, Perhaps we can reposition the problem and focus on training a learning algorithm for data remediation activities. Can we use ML to help resolve poor data quality and reposition it as a custodian for good data quality in the future? As a proof of concept, we performed model data normalization and label cleaning for a small subset of three Revit projects with consideration to OmniClass specifications for rooms. These models would ultimately serve as a training set to understand spatial relationships and classifications, which we could then reapply to a larger set of models and improve the data quality in a larger portfolio. In this instance, we collaborated with HDR Architecture to make use of BIM data from three large size healthcare projects to train and test probabilistic classifiers that could facilitate the classification of spaces. The planning of healthcare projects is notable for its strict and detailed spatial requirements, including room sizing, proportion, and adjacency. Individual spaces adhere to rigorous considerations, including the provision of medical equipment and for patient and provider experience. During the design stages of a healthcare facility, medical planners and designers are tasked with balancing multiple objectives and complex standards. These design processes rely heavily on the experience and heuristics employed by planners, which can limit the speed and efficiency of project delivery. In our prototype, a first order feature set is extracted from our model database, including room name, area, level, and department attributes. We then use geometric analysis of the model elements to derive second order descriptive features related to room shape and adjacency to other rooms. The OmniClass specification is then used as the labeled or predicted data feature. Using the three clean models as training data, we are able to use a probabilistic classifier to predict space OmniClass classifications. To demonstrate the effectiveness of the trained predictive model, we applied the algorithm on a Revit file that possessed incomplete and inconsistently applied properties. Using our algorithm trained on the limited data set, the classifier was able to predict OmniClass labels for 80% of the unlabeled elements. While this research presents methods and technologies for leveraging building data and improving data quality, it also reveals serious challenges in the construction industry for effectively employing data analysis and automation techniques. Even when adhering to the data structure presented by BIM, the quality of the data remains subject to inconsistent production practices, lack of standardization, and error-prone data entry methods. As such, the onus of data quality remains with the authors of the original BIM file. As these methods of data collection are adopted by building practices, we foresee the need for greater accountability on the subject of data standards in order to successfully utilize the data for meaningful applications of new technologies. We also foresee the need for the development and deployment of data remediation techniques for economical cleaning of older legacy data that may yet contain potentially useful insights for future design efforts.